Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. On today's video, I've got some new fall projects to share with you. So let's get started. My first project is a 12 inch wood round that I actually ordered off of Amazon and it came in a pack of maybe 10. Um, and it's super thin, it's that really thin wood, um, but it kind of gets the job done. Now, I'm staining it with two different Dixie Bell stains. I mixed Voodoo Gel Stain, the Tobacco Road, with the other Voodoo Gel Stain that's all natural. So, um, I just mixed it together and it's kind of a lighter finish to it. Once it dried, I'm using Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream to just dry brush over it. Now, I sometimes hesitate about dry brushing because sometimes it will kind of get a little bit too thick. But what I've tried to start doing is to make sure that I have very little on my brush and I start um, from the middle and I kind of work my way out. Now, what I did is I took some drop cloth and I measured it to see what size I needed it to be. And I um, am using the IOD Ever Blooming Roses. It's a transfer that came out this spring. And I just cut out the part that I wanted to put on my wall pocket. And then um, once I got my piece put on, I kind of cut a little bit here and a little bit there just to make sure that it didn't look quite so stark when I cut that one rose off to the like on one side. So I'm just kind of piecing some little um, parts here and there to make it look a little bit more cohesive. But it's a really pretty transfer, but it's neutral. And so I think it's perfect for the fall. And um, transferring onto drop cloth or a lot of other fabrics is super easy. Um, it Sometimes it takes a little bit more effort to push it down, but it goes down really well. And then I do like to spray it with some sealer just very lightly, just to protect that. And I'm just kind of finishing it off, going around that. And then when you put your transfer down, then you just burnish it. Now I'm taking the IOD Kindest Regards stamp, which is a really popular stamp, and I'm using Stays On Ink, and I think I use the brown Stays On Ink since the design is more neutral. I didn't want to use black because I thought it might be just a little bit too stark, and because I don't know exactly where I'm going to start that wall pocket at, I just go ahead and stamp the whole circle because it's not going to hurt anything. Now I lay it down and I folded that top edge down and I've am now what I'm doing is I'm taking my hot glue gun and I'm just going to be wrapping it around to the back. Now because it's going to be a curved surface, what I do is I just um, make little snippets here and there, and it just helps to where the fabric lays down really well. And just, if you'll just watch and see how I cut into it, and I don't actually cut all the way to the edge, but I just cut enough to where it will fold over really pretty. Now, because I have grown up sewing, that's why I know that um, you need to make those little little cuts to it um, because when you're sewing and you have a curved surface, you do want to make those little cuts into it. Um, and then I'm just gluing it down. And when I finish the whole piece, then what I do is I'm going to cover up the back with just some butcher paper to kind of cover all that stuff up. And then because it's folded under up at the top, I need to add just a little bit of extra hot glue um, where it's folded and there's my little wall pocket now because this is super thin if i tried to staple on like a little hanger then it would go right through that wood so i decided that i need it to be a little bit thicker on the back so i'm just using some wide popsicle sticks 
and I'm just going to glue those on the back. And I actually glue two layers of them. Um, and then that way it gives me some added thickness on the back to put a hanger. And what I'm doing is I put a little bit of tight bond glue um, at the end and then right in the middle. And then in between that tight bond glue, I put a little bit of hot glue for that instant hold. And then once I get that all put on, and that's my little miter shears. I think I ordered those off of Amazon, and I love them. Um, they don't cut like really thick wood, but they do something thin. And so I put a second layer on it. And what that does is it makes it thick enough to where when I put use my um, staple gun to put a hanger on it, then I know that that staple's not going to go all the way through. And I put two layers just to have a little bit of added thickness. And then um, until it sets up all the way, what I do is I just set some heavy stuff on it. Now, when you get a new piece of drop cloth, um, what I'd like to do is cut off the little pieces all around the edge. And I could have used different hangers, um, but I didn't want to take away from the actual wall pocket. So I just used one of those little edges from my drop cloth when I first bought it, and I just trimmed that off. And then I just used my little um, staple gun to staple onto it. And I was, I was excited because there was a part of me that was just a little bit worried that it might still go through that wood, but it didn't. So I was super tickled. And so I just put some different flowers in it. And these are solo wood flowers. And I dyed them, um, some of them in that blue, serenity blue. And I just added a little bit of softener and some water. And I just put those little pieces in it. And I just think it's a beautiful wall hanging and it's perfect for the fall. But then, you know, you can change the flowers later on. And I didn't want to make it super full either. So what do you think? Now, my next piece is going to be just a little small tote bag that I bought at Hobby Lobby. And this is actually for me. Um, I'm going to carry my Bible in it when I go to church because my other bag that I've been carrying my Bible in is getting kind of threadbare so I wanted to do this newer one um, but because I wanted it to be a little bit more and just not so plain I took some Waverly moss green paint and what I'm doing is I'm just painting a rectangle now if I had been smart I probably could have used some painters tape and paint taped off the part that I wanted to paint but I didn't think about it. So I just, I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want it to be. But it's Waverly Moss Green. And someone asked me if I liked Waverly paint. And actually, I like it a lot. Um, they have some beautiful colors. Um, and their pumpkin color is probably my favorite color of any name brand paint. Um, but my local Walmart doesn't carry a big stock of it. Um, plus, one of my friends... Um, she runs a small business, and she sells Dixie Belle paint, so that's really why I use Dixie Belle paint more than I do Waverly, but I do need to go ahead and use up what I've got at home, but I think it's really pretty. Now, this is a transfer that I got, and it is made by that Timeless Designs. I know that I've used their transfers before, and they are very, very good quality transfers, and they go on so well. And so I transferred on a church, and then there was a saying, and I talked about this saying before, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So that it's kind of hard to see just a little bit because of the darkness of it. And then what I did was I wanted to finish off the edges. I didn't want to put lace around it or anything, but I wanted to finish off that square so I'm using the IOD Adornment Stamp, and it's kind of hard to stamp it because that fabric, um, it's kind of thick in different parts. Um, and so in some of the edges, it kind of smudged a little bit, but that's okay because it's just for me. But I just wanted to make it look a little bit more finished. And I'm not going to put like a little lace hanger on it or anything because... Um, sometimes if I'm carrying too much into church, my husband carries it for me. So what do you think? Isn't that just so pretty? 
Now, I've never been to a church that's quite that shape, but I really like the shape of that church. And on this transfer set, there's three different sheets, and there's a lot of different churches on it. And I just think it's so pretty, and it's perfect um, for my Bible bag. So I hope you like it. But the Timeless Designs makes wonderful transfers. Now, if you're liking this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you're not, not already part of our family. Now, my next piece is just something just really simple and quick, but it's pretty for the fall. Um, it's just a little scrap piece of barn wood that I had. And these are some of those little metal corners that you can um, order off of Amazon. It kind of finishes it off. And initially, I um, put some on all four sides, but I ended up taking some of them off. Now, this piece of decoupage paper, um, it's got some little birds on it, and it's in fall colors. So, let me tell you what I did. Um, this is the decoupage paper, and because, you know, we've talked about when you do um, put decoupage on, you know, a surface, it helps for it to be either a white or a cream. But... Did you know that if you paint the back of that decoupage paper first in like a cream and let it dry really well, then you can put it on anything and the decoupage paper doesn't fade into the color of the background. Um, so it turned out really good. And um, I wanted to kind of keep this simple. And this is just some little trim um, that looks a little bit like braided twine. And I'm just going to staple two little um, pieces of it on the back and then that's all I'm going to do to it because I just think it's um, just a little shelf sitter um, but you know for those of us who love birds um, I really like this particular decoupage paper because the birds on this are more fall colors but on that particular piece there's actually several um, different birds on that decoupage paper. So if you like birds, this is a really good decoupage paper to use. So here's my final piece. Now, it's it's a rather plain. There's not a lot of fancy things about it, um, but that's okay. Not everything has to be fancy. Um, but because I'm using the barn wood, I wanted it to be a little bit more rustic, and I felt like if I added too much to it, it wouldn't look right. All right, my last project is one of those flat pumpkins, but oh my goodness, I went to my local Dollar Tree and they didn't have any more of those flat pumpkins that are $1.25. Um, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? Because if you've watched my channel, you know I love me some flat pumpkins um, because they're easier to store. And personally, I think they're easier to decorate um, and that's what I like. So I pulled off that little piece that said fall and um, I actually saved it because, well, I might either use it this year or put it back with my fall stuff and use it next year. But it's kind of a heavier piece, so I didn't want to throw it away. So now what I'm doing, I'm just painting the front of it with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. Now, this is a pretty large pumpkin. Um, and this was actually in the not $1.25 um, little aisle that they have. And this one was $3.00. Um, but it's heavy, just like the other ones. And so I was pretty excited because um, I thought, well, the other ones are kind of small. So I bought two of these, and then um, I actually bought one that looks like a football, but it's got a pumpkin stem on it. So I went on and got three, and I don't know if I'll use all of them for this fall, but um, I liked them because they were bigger than they normally are. Now, this is the IOD, and it's the stamp called Barnwood Planks. And I'm just going to stamp that all over the front of this pumpkin. Now, I've used this um, stamp before, um, but I'm not really great at it. And I think, looking back, I would have used some of the different parts of the stamp set instead of just that one particular piece. Now... Um, this is a piece of decoupage paper, but this one I actually had printed out um, because um, it was a new one from John L. And I love these colors. So I just had it printed out on paper. Um, but if you order it, it will be in the decoupage paper, so it'll be thicker. 
And so um, what I'm doing now is I just kind of tore out the shape I wanted and then I just went around it with distressing ink. Now, what I'm doing now is this is that wonderful leaf mold that I love and it's that Zuri mold. And I'm using my hot glue gun to make several different um, of those leaves. I don't make the bigger one. And um, if you've not watched my channel before, my hot glue gun is pretty hot. It's about 100 degrees. Um, and so you have to be super careful. But it comes out of the glue gun really fast and smooth. And it, if you use the ones that don't um, have that same temperature, then it's not going to do as well. Now, this particular leaf, I took a mixture of the Dixie Belle cashmere and the pumpkin spice and I made that particular color because I was trying to imitate the color of the pumpkins that were actually in the decoupage paper. And so um, I do this one and then I do another leaf in the Serenity, Rust-Oleum Serenity Blue. And then I do another leaf in just that plain cashmere the Dixie Belle Cashmere, and these were colors from last fall that I found on sale. Um, and because the pumpkins in the decoupage paper um, have a lot of um, detail to them, I wanted um, these particular leaves to kind of mimic that as well. So I'm going to use some Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain on top of them to kind of add to that detail and these leaf um, molds are so, so pretty. And I love the detail on them. And I just um, also um, use that Voodoo Gel Stain that is kind of um, the Tobacco Road and then the All Natural. Um, I like that one a lot right now. And I used it for this video. And I think I used it for some other videos. So um, I'm, I'm liking that mix of the two because it's not quite so stark. And so I'm going to be putting these three leaves on top of the pumpkin. And this is where I just kind of go back over them. And when you use um, food or gel stain, brush it all on, but be ready to wipe it all off. And then if you think you've wiped off too much, you can always go back for more and put some more on it. But if you put too much on and let it set for a little bit, then it's going to be much harder for it to come off. So it's better to do a little bit and then do a little bit more. Now, that particular little bow came with that pumpkin, so I'm going to use that again. And then um, I just kind of layer these different leaves on top of each other. And one of the reasons that I used hot glue on these leaves is because I want to kind of stack them on top of each other and that's um, really good with the hot glue gun. Now, I could have used clay, um, but in all honesty, I didn't have a lot of time. So I just went on and did the hot glue. But I buy my glue sticks in bulk. So it's really a lot ch as cheap as air dry clay um, when you buy them in bulk. So what do you think? But I love those colors. Those are my favorite colors for the fall. And that blue, oh. Oh, it's so, it's so, so pretty. All right, friends, we are at the end of the video. So, and here are all of our projects today. We've got a wall pocket. And I love it. I love those solo wood flowers. Um, I have a lot of them, and I need to start using some more of them. So, I'm going to try to get them in some more videos. And um, I've got these two little pieces down at the bottom. And I just, I love them. I love those colors. And so some of this will be going in my booth. Oh, oh, one last thing I want to tell you. Um, on that transfer, when I started putting those flowers in it, the transfer cracked a little bit um, because I hadn't had a chance to spray it. Um, I was going to go on and put the flowers in it. But oh my goodness, I loved it because it made it look a little bit more aged. So um, I, I like that it kind of um, cracked just a little bit. So in the comments today, Leave me a message and tell me which one's your favorite. But make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll have a video coming up 
for Thursday. So you be ready for that. And I hope you have a great rest of the week.